So, one more rest day to go until the quarterfinals. As we approach a century of Gareth Southgate, is the best yet to come, or will Saturday mark 100 and out? Meantime, with Bellingham, Serbia fans, and now Turkey's goal-scoring hero versus Austria, Meri Demiral, all under UEFA investigation. What are the point of the rules here if outcomes don't come until after the event? Also today, has the Premier League distorted how fans feel England should operate? Can Scott Parker put right the perceived wrongs of the past at Turf Moor? More redundancies at Old Trafford now. Was this what Manchester United fans had in mind when Sir Jim came to the rescue? Daniel Dubois trainer Don Charles joins us ahead of his Joshua Bout. Plus, our Aston Villa looking Champions League ready. Guten Morgen from Dusseldorf in Germany. This is Jim White, Alex Crook and Gabby Agbon Lahore and we are live on Talk Sport. Guten Morgen, indeed. Gabby at Bon Lahore, alongside my good friend, Mr. Alex Crook. Gabby, I haven't seen you since Munich. Uh, uh, you, you've been in Frankfurt, you've been here, there, you've been back home, you're back out. Yeah, it was good to get home for a few days, but always come, good to come back, Jim. Come to watch some entertaining football, but not by all teams. Absolutely. <laughs> Great having you on board. Gabby with us for the three hours today. Uh, Mr. Alex Crook uh, enjoyed the show yesterday with Rennie Mullenstein, who said what he meant and meant what he said, didn't he? Oh, absolutely. It was uh, a tactical masterclass at times. Uh, nice to see you fully clothed, by the way. Yes. Oh. Well, <laughs> Gabby, yeah, I, I didn't think he would mention this, but he has. Alex Crook and I uh, decided to uh, have a 30-minute session in the uh, spa and sauna in the hotel yesterday. And, of course, uh, being the physical specimen that I am, Gabs, I discarded all uh, swimming costumes. Just, just two years? Swimming just costumes. two years or anyone else was in there? Or? I think that's for us to know and okay, do. Okay, to, okay, okay. To uh, work out I'll for check yourself. the cameras. Uh, Alex, I enjoyed that in the span sauna with you. It was quite an arrival from yourself when you sat in the charcoal. Um, <laughs> it was very good, very enjoyable, and um, it got a bit hot under the collar yesterday. No, Rennie was brilliant, was he not, Alex, yesterday? He was, and I think we're going to hear a bit from him uh, throughout the course of the morning. Really good on what he would do if he was England manager. Interesting what he would do in Marcus Rashford as well, because we're hearing fresh reports that, that maybe Manchester United could be open to offers for him. So, yeah, a real education. And it'll be the same today with this man, I'm sure. Mm, not too sure about that. We'll see. We'll see. Quickly. Now, Gabby, it's terrific <laughs> to, to have you on board. We're delighted about that. So uh, now it really gets down to business again. Um, this is the final rest day. One more rest day. One more sleep, uh, as they say, until the quarterfinals. What have we got? So on Friday, it's Spain against Germany, and then it's Portugal against the French. Then on Saturday, right here in Dusseldorf. In fact, from our vantage point here in the 17th floor of this building, we can see the Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf Arena um, this morning. A bit of cloud here in Dusseldorf. It's going to get sunny this afternoon. England against Switzerland. That's live in talk sport. Five o'clock your time at home. Six o'clock hours. And then three hours after that, Netherlands against Turkey live on talk sport too. All those games on the talk sport network. Uh, a century of Gareth Southgate then, uh, Gabby. Um, this weekend will mark 100 games for him in charge. Many hope that it's not 100 and out what do you think of the 100? What do you think of the Southgate experience? Listen, there's been a lot of ups, hasn't there? I mean, we, we go back to Euro 2020. You know, the whole country singing, Southgate, you're the one. You know, Tommy Kitten come out and, 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 and make the song. You know, everyone's pro Southgate. Everyone's enjoying the football. Everyone's confident we can get to the final and win it. Then in the final, he doesn't make the right subs. We sit back and we go one the ahead. And then we, we, we miss out on winning then. The World Cup 2022. Unlucky, Harry Kane misses the penalty, and then we go out. But then everyone's thinking, come on, we got this close, we got that close. Come on, this is the one, this tournament. And because of the football we've been playing, the lack of changes at the right time, I think even pro Southgate supporters are starting to turn and think, come on, this group of players, the players you've left at home, Madison, Grealish, Rashford, Maguire, you've left so many top players at home and the squad of players you've got. We need to be playing better football and we need to be going and winning this tournament. The thing is, Alex, he is, Southgate is, the most successful England manager since Sir Alf Ramsey in 1966. What does that tell us? More, more, more about the time that's passed or more about Southgate himself? Uh, probably a combination of the two, but, it, but it's interesting because um, I've got children under the age of 14, so all they've ever really known 
is England's success stories. You know, the, the World Cup semi-final uh, against Croatia, when arguably England should have gone through to the final, that European Championship final that Gab's alluded to, even the World Cup, on a knife edge, really. If Harry Kane scores that penalty, they probably beat France. And I've had to tell my children, this, this is not how it is with England. This is not what we do. You know, we lose to Iceland <laughs> in, in the round of 16. Sometimes we don't even qualify for major tournaments. So I think there's a generation of England fans who have only ever known success. And, and you have to give Gareth Southgate credit for that. He's repaired the fractured relationship between the England support and the players. You know, that golden generation. You remember Wayne Rooney bemoaning his own fans. He came off the pitch, I think it was against Algeria, wasn't it, at the World yeah. Cup in, yeah. in 2010. Yeah, but Alex, having said all that, if Jude Bellingham wasn't standing where he was stood yep. on Sunday night, uh, Gareth Southgate wouldn't be with us, I wouldn't have thought. And that's the counter-argument. You know, this is... a. Uh, a fantastic opportunity for England because I'm going to say it, I don't think the quality of football in this tournament has been that high. I don't see an outstanding team. Maybe you can make a case for Spain, but nobody fancied them coming into it. Germany on home soil yeah. are dangerous, but I still don't think this is a brilliant Germany team. So if England play to their capabilities, they could win this. But I guess the issue we've got so far, they've been nowhere near their capabilities. But again, maybe it's a reset now. If he's going to change the formation, maybe the tournament yeah. starts now. And if they beat Switzerland, they beat Switzerland well, they get into that semi-final... We'll all forget the dross that's been served up so far. But Jim Crookie, what the problem I get and like a lot of fans are saying is like after every game, poor performance and it will get better next game. You've got to warm into the tournament and then it's not because you're playing the same team. Yeah. Foden's not work for four games. You'll probably play him again in the same position. But does and it matter how you get to Berlin as long as you get there? Is that not the, the, of course, the way to look at it? Of course, but... As fans, you're looking at it, and you know us in the media, we're looking at it and I'm saying, mm, if you play like that, you know Switzerland are a good, good side. You know you're not going to get past yeah. the quarterfinals. So yeah. we, we want to see better football. But if we're sitting here at the end of the tournament and England have won in the final, no one's going to care about how we played during the tournament. But that's why actually he has to change the formation, doesn't he? Because it's clearly not working. He yes. has to change the system. He has to find natural width that's been lacking on the left-hand side. He has to find a way to get Phil Foden more involved in an attacking sense. He has to stop Harry Kane dropping so deep. He has to yes. get Declan Rice higher up the pitch. So actually, I think he'll have a lot more credit in the bank if he does go with a back three. He does go with a more ambitious approach. Even if England were to lose, I think fans would be more... Uh, encouraged by that than if he yes. just picks the same team again Agreed. and we see the same style I, I England think England fans Alex come in here in numbers and they are coming here to Dusseldorf in huge numbers we're hearing they cannot even contemplate the thought of England losing they Th dare not of them contemplate. Are contemplating it Jim I think a lot of them are very worried about this game they, you know they were worried about Slovakia they were when it got to the 95th minute. I agree that they should be worried. I think they are. They're not going to let on that they're worried no. because they're here to see one thing and one thing only, England progress. Interestingly, when um, Rennie Mullenstein was with uh, Alex and myself yesterday, he jumped quickly to give us his assessment of England and Southgate. They have underperformed of the quality that everybody knows that they've got. I think it's been huff and puff. Has been, you know, going in there, and I think, and that is just my opinion, because I am, I'm also a Pep Guardiola fan, as a manager and as a coach, and I honestly do think, if he would have worked with this material, you would have seen a completely different England side. I really do. So you think what? it's all on the managers? <clears throat> it's not all on the managers because players need to take responsibilities, but the manager is the navigation system. He's the one that creates that culture. He's the one that comes up with a clear vision. This is, and this is the way I want to play. This is how, and this is your job. Defensively, in transition, and offensively when we have the ball. And Pep Guardiola is that. And I think there, there is, with these players, they're relying too much on their own individual quality they have, and they have. They're relying on moments like Bellingham's yeah, overhead exactly. Kick. And they can still decide games like that. And smaller teams who haven't got that quality, so, so they fall to the wayside. That was Rennie Mullenstein with us yesterday. Gabby, you listened to that, I yes. think, for the first time. You nodded with everything that he was saying. You're in absolute agreement with what he 100%. said. 100%. When you watch Manchester City play, what do you see? Anyone doesn't do, do exactly as they're told. Pep is having a tantrum on the sideline. You watch England, and we're at the stadium watching the games. We've got a good view of Southgate. He sat down, relaxing. He sat down. He's not up screaming at players. Since, I think since all the games I've been yeah, relaxing. Well, he's sitting there, isn't he? He's not up and he's not screaming at players. You're watching England play and you're seeing, like, our wingers sometimes not in position. Bellingham sometimes out of position. But why do you expect England to play like Manchester City? I'm not saying pet play like them, but can we see a style of play? Can we see, like, a team that look like they've been coached? Players know where to go. Harry Kane, stay up. Saka, Saka. Saka. Short all the time. Make all runs the time. in behind. Foden. 
stop coming short all the time, make runs in behind. Yep. You say maybe that's not a pep, a clop. You wouldn't be screaming at these players on I, the pitch and in the same room saying, do the job that I've told you to do. I hear what you say, Gabby, but Alex, has the Premier League not just started how fans believe this England team should operate? No, not at all. There's quality in this England team. Phil Foden was the best player in the Premier League last season. Carl Walker is one of, if not the best, right back in the world at this moment. But in time. look where Foden was operating. Harry Kane scored 50 goals for club and country. Absolutely tore up the Bundesliga. Yes, he didn't win a trophy, but that wasn't his fault. He did his job. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not having that argument. There's, there's more than enough talent in this England team. And I'll go back to what I said to Rennie Mullenstein yesterday. Any other coach in this tournament would bite their hands off for the opportunity to have access to those players, not even just the starting 11 that Gabby's written down here. Cole Palmer, uh, I think, is, is absolutely sensational. Cobby Maynard is a generational yes. talent, in my opinion. So there's so much depth in this England squad, and the performances haven't reflected that, and that has to come down to let's, the manager. Quickly, Jim, let's go back to the Slovakia game. Slovakia were one the up against us, made two changes before we made a change, and we're chasing the game. Yep. The manager saw that yep. even the goal, the, the goal scorer... He's seen, well, not the goal scorer, sorry, the, the, the player who was the, the, the biggest threat for Slovakia, mm. he took him off after 60 minutes because he wasn't doing it in the second half. And we still haven't made a change before Slovakia have made two right. changes. Right. That's the problem. Still a lot of pessimism around you two the, yeah. the, this morning. Not, not so much you, Alex, but definitely yourself, Gabby, that unless things are seen to change, they're heading home. Just change the formation. I mean, I've written a formation here. We're talking about three at the back. Why not play a back three? Walker Stones Conser, yeah. Trent and Saka as wing backs, Bellingham and Rice as your two centre midfielders, Foden off the right, Kane down the middle, Eze off the left. That gives you Eze and Foden who like to come inside naturally. Saka and Trent give you that width going forward. Bellingham can get into um, into the box as well. Rice, Conser, Stones and Walker, you stay back at all times. It's not difficult. How about you in the technical area with Gareth? And, and, I think I'll do Saturday. a better job, mate. Honestly, you've got, you've got your badges, haven't you? I have indeed. <laughs> I, I, I might have got them on a fast track course, but I've got them. Go we're on. going to get the Swiss perspective very shortly already, and we're only at Thursday. We've seen quite a number of Swiss fans arriving here in Dusseldorf. Uh, of course, they've made the trip. England fans flying in in huge numbers today and tomorrow, and then it's uh, the game itself on Saturday. We'll get the Swiss perspective perspective, if uh, I can get my teeth uh, straight, <laughs> uh, very shortly. Never buy teeth from a catalogue. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.